And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Cleosaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. We talked about it briefly in episode 350 as part of our Hadrosaur Hootenanny. <laughs> there were a lot of Hadrosaurs in that Hootenanny. Yes, so we it was just very brief. <laughs> we can expand here a little bit. It was a Hadrosauroid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Kansas in the U.S. in the Neobrar Formation. It probably looked somewhat similar to Edmontosaurus, and, you know, being a hadrosaur, it had that duck bill. It also had a long tail. It was an herbivore. It probably walked on two legs and then stood on all fours to graze food. It's hard to know how big it was because there's not that many fossils that have been found, but Tom Holtz estimated it to be about 12 feet or 3.7 meters long. That was a little guy, especially compared to Edmontosaurus. Yes. Originally... It was named by Marsh in 1872 as Hadrosaurus agilis. But then in 1890, it got renamed to Cleosaurus agilis because it was just found to be too different from Hadrosaurus. So the type species is Cleosaurus agilis. And the genus name means broken lizard. That refers to the way the fossils were found. (laughs) What? (laughs) Not anything to do with the dinosaur itself. (laughs) They found some broken fossils and they said, we'll just name it broken lizard. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Poor Cleosaurus. They were naming a lot of dinosaurs, I guess. Running out of ideas. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, it was found in Kansas in the U.S. It's likely that the specimen died on shore and then got washed out to sea. They found parts of the skull and an articulated skeleton. Marsh wrote, quote, The skull of Cleosaurus is long and narrow, with the facial portion especially produced. And he also wrote that, quote, The skull shows a blunt Rugose muzzle. <laughs> muzzle. Mm-hmm. Not a word you see associated with dinosaurs that often, but it kind of fits with the, the duckbill head shape. Yeah. So a lot of the bones that were found were crushed and flattened, also known as broken, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Famously broken. Yeah. <laughs> so the fossils found include vertebrae, parts of the chest and shoulder, parts of the arms, parts of the pelvis, parts of the legs, and parts of the feet. There were in the past two other Cleosaurus species, but those are no longer considered to be valid. Marsh named Cleosaurus anectins in 1892, based on two skeletons found in the Lance Formation. Later, that Cleosaurus anectins became Anatosaurus and then eventually became Edmontosaurus. I was going to say, I know Edmontosaurus anectins. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) It's a popular one. And then in 1903, G.R. Weiland named Cleosaurus affinis based on three toe bones found in the Pierre Shale in South Dakota that was found along with fossils from a giant sea turtle. But those fossils got mixed up with Cleosaurus agilis. So now we've just got Cleosaurus agilis. In 1948, Joseph Gregory found three toe bones similar in size in the Yale collections that looked like it came from the Pierre Shale, but didn't assign the Well, he didn't reassign the species. It was older in age and too fragmentary. In 2004, Jack Horner and others found Cleosaurus affinis to be dubious. In 1940, Cleosaurus was described partially by its broad, leaf-like teeth. Walter Combs Jr. in 1988 said Cleosaurus should be redefined based on something other than teeth characteristics. I don't think he's the only one to have said that. Yeah. (laughs) It's nice when you can include something other than just teeth. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2011, when Albert Prieto Marquez found Hadrosaurus to be a valid dinosaur, he also found Cleosaurus agilis to be valid. And what makes Cleosaurus unique is that the length of its deltopectoral crest, a ridge on the front of its upper arm, is less than 48% the length of the humerus, as well as there's certain details in the ilium, part of the pelvis. So I guess if you're only looking at the teeth, you might not have anything unique. Mm -hmm. But if you include other parts of the animal, then you could find unique things. So it might kind of boil down to what you consider Cleosaurus versus not officially Cleosaurus holotype. Yes. But these days we consider it to be official. Okay. Gastroliths have been thought to be found in Cleosaurus, but it turned out to most likely be gravel that washed in after the individual died. <laughs> That's disappointing. Yeah. Gastroliths can be tricky sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially since it's just like they swallow a rock. Well, did they swallow that rock or was that rock just in the rock Mm -hmm. near it? (laughs) Hard to say sometimes. But it also turns out that that Cleosaurus individual with the not gastrolus was actually an Edmontosaurus specimen. 
But when Barnum Brown found the specimen, this is in 1900, Edmontosaurus was considered to be Cleosaurus. Ah, yeah. That happens a lot if you don't know the whole story. You end up in these traps of Mm -hmm. like, oh, the unique thing about this animal is blank. But really, it got redefined and it's totally different. Yes. That's why it's important to read the literature, all those scientific (laughs) papers. But sometimes there are a lot of them (laughs) for a particular dinosaur. Good job, Sabrina. Oh, thanks. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash inodino or click the link on the left. 